Welcome to our Chinese Finance and Economy Briefing Program. Today, we dive into the excitement surrounding the upcoming National People's Congress NPC, meeting in Beijing, where investors are hopeful for significant fiscal measures to sustain the recent $4 trillion stock market rally. With expectations running high, analysts suggest that at least 2 trillion yuan in stimulus is needed to keep the momentum going as global fund managers show renewed interest in Chinese stocks. In other news, Mexican President Claudia Scheinbaum is weighing the possibility of imposing tariffs on small imported goods from China. This strategic move aims to boost revenue and protect domestic jobs as the country grapples with a significant budget deficit. The proposed tariffs would target products sold through popular Chinese e-commerce platforms, as officials seek to combat unfair competition and ensure a fair playing field for local businesses. Lastly, we explore how China is working to unify its stance during electric vehicle tariff negotiations with the EU. Analysts warn that the EU's individual talks could weaken China's collective bargaining power. Meanwhile, discussions continue, focusing on price commitments amid rising tensions over tariffs on Chinese-made EVs. Please stay tuned for more detailed insights. South China Morning Post reports that investors are eagerly anticipating the upcoming National People's Congress NPC, meeting in Beijing, scheduled for November 4-8. This legislative gathering is expected to endorse significant fiscal support aimed at revitalizing China's economy, particularly after a remarkable $4 trillion rally in the stock markets of China and Hong Kong. Since late September, stock benchmarks have soared over 20%, making them the top performers globally. However, the momentum has recently slowed, with investors adopting a cautious stance. Analysts suggest that for the rally to continue, the NPC must approve a fiscal stimulus package of at least 2 trillion yuan, $280 billion, to complement prior monetary easing. The outcome of the NPC meeting is critical, as global fund managers are showing renewed interest in Chinese stocks after previously withdrawing due to disillusionment with Beijing's incremental measures. South China Morning Post also highlights Mexico's President Claudia Scheinbaum's consideration of imposing tariffs on small imported goods from China to bolster domestic revenue and protect local jobs. With Mexico facing its largest budget deficit in over three decades, the proposed tariffs would target products sold through popular Chinese e-commerce platforms like Temu, Shine, AliExpress, and Alibaba. Reports indicate that these platforms have managed to evade local taxes and technical standards, leading to significant job losses in Mexico's textile industry. Finance Secretary Rogelio Ramirez de la O is tasked with finding new revenue sources, and any tariffs would be part of a broader economic package to be submitted to Congress by mid-November. The government aims to address the unfair competition posed by Chinese imports while ensuring that social programs remain funded. South China Morning Post further discusses China's efforts to counter the European Union's divide and conquer strategy during electric vehicle EV tariff negotiations. Analysts warn that the EU's approach of negotiating with individual Chinese EV manufacturers could undermine collective talks and Beijing's unified response. As punitive import tariffs of up to 35.3% loom, China is emphasizing the importance of a coordinated strategy among its manufacturers to maintain competitiveness. The Ministry of Commerce has cautioned against separate negotiations, asserting that they could erode trust and complicate future agreements. Chinese officials are advocating for a singular representation of the industry to ensure that any price commitment plan is uniformly applied, highlighting the need for discipline and unity in the face of the EU's tactics. South China Morning Post reports that China's President Xi Jinping is keen on enhancing cooperation with Finland, particularly in green energy and addressing the ongoing Ukraine crisis. During a meeting with Finnish President Alexander Stubb in Beijing, she expressed a commitment to collaborate on green transformation, artificial intelligence, and emerging industries. He also mentioned the importance of cultural exchanges, proposing visa-free travel for Finnish citizens to foster closer ties. Stubb, marking his first visit to China in five years, emphasized the necessity for peace in Ukraine, condemning Russia's actions as violations of international law. She reassured that China would play a proactive role in seeking a peaceful resolution to the conflict, amidst growing international scrutiny of Beijing's relationship with Moscow. In a separate development, TikTok's CEO Chu Shouzi addressed concerns regarding the app's future in the U.S. while speaking at a summit in Saudi Arabia. With the U.S. government threatening a ban unless the app divests from its Chinese parent company ByteDance, Chu reiterated TikTok's mission to inspire creativity and connect users globally. He acknowledged the challenge of earning trust in various markets, especially as the app faces scrutiny over national security issues. 
Chu highlighted TikTok's unique algorithm and commitment to innovation as factors that contribute to its popularity, boasting over a billion active users worldwide. As the company navigates legal hurdles, it aims to maintain its position as a leading social media platform. Meanwhile, the South China Morning Post highlights a peculiar trend in China's stock market, where retail investors are driving up the shares of Ysoft, a company whimsically associated with former U.S. President Donald Trump. Despite the company's lack of substantial ties to the U.S. and a recent decline in revenue, its stock surged due to its name's resemblance to Trump victory. This phenomenon reflects the irrational behavior of retail investors in China, who often base their trading decisions on perceived connections rather than financial fundamentals. Analysts note that such speculative trading practices are common in China's market, where meme stocks can rapidly gain popularity, fueled by social sentiment and media buzz, rather than actual business performance. BBC The meteoric rise of TikTok has propelled its co-founder, Zhang Yiming, to the pinnacle of wealth in China, making him the richest person in the country with a staggering net worth of $49.3 billion. This remarkable increase of 43% since 2023 is largely attributed to the global success of TikTok, despite looming concerns regarding its connections to the Chinese government. Zhang, who stepped down from his leadership role in 2021 but retains a significant stake in ByteDance, the parent company, has seen his fortune swell even as the US government threatens to ban the app unless ByteDance divests it. In contrast to the challenges faced by many in the Chinese economy, Zhang's wealth exemplifies the potential for success within the tech sector, where only a fraction of the wealthy saw gains amidst a broader economic downturn. South China Morning Post in a strategic move to enhance its influence in global trade, China has announced a zero-tariff policy for goods imported from the world's least developed countries, effective December 1. This initiative, which targets 43 nations primarily in Africa and parts of Asia, aims to reduce shipping costs and bolster trade relations, positioning China as a key player in emerging markets. Analysts note that this policy poses little risk to China's manufacturing economy while allowing it to gain leverage as Western nations adopt more protectionist stances. The decision aligns with China's broader strategy to foster solidarity with developing nations, potentially securing their support in international forums. With a significant portion of merchandise exports from these countries directed toward China, this move is set to further entrench China's role as a leading trade partner. South China Morning Post Hong Kong Land, under the stewardship of Jardine Matheson, is embarking on an ambitious plan to raise $10 billion through asset sales and strategic realignment, focusing on the ultra-premium property market. Following a comprehensive review, the company has identified 50 assets for potential sale, aiming to streamline its portfolio and enhance its competitive edge in Asia's gateway cities. CEO Michael Smith emphasizes that this pivot is not merely a reaction to financial pressures but a calculated move to position the firm as a leader in high-end integrated commercial properties. Despite facing challenges in Hong Kong's office market and a sluggish housing sector in mainland China, the company is committed to long-term growth, with plans to double dividends and significantly increase its assets under management by 2035. South China Morning Post reports that Alibaba's Singles Day Shopping Festival has witnessed a remarkable surge in demand for designer toys and pet products, signaling a rebound in consumer confidence in China's economy. Kicking off on October 14, the event has seen a vibrant presale period where consumers have eagerly placed deposits for guaranteed lower prices. By October 24, Taba and Tmall revealed that 284 brands had each surpassed 100 million yuan in sales showcasing a notable increase in the popularity of niche items like Jelly Cat soft toys among young shoppers. The first four hours of the festival proved particularly fruitful for pet products, with 658 brands doubling their sales compared to last year. The festival, which started in 2009, has become a key indicator of consumer spending trends in China, especially after recent economic stimulus measures were announced. Data from consultancy Maritco Services highlighted that average daily sales of cosmetics and designer toys skyrocketed fivefold during the event, with Tmall and Taba leading the charge. In a significant development, Alibaba's logistics arm, Tsinyao, has begun collaborating with rival JD.com to enhance delivery services, marking a shift in the competitive landscape of Chinese e-commerce. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide.
we encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. News breaks, buzz the ground, stories spin, walls come down, voices merge in the sound, faces mix in the crowd, broadcasters paint the scene, world events on our screen, every link a different theme, words collide in the stream, six degrees connect the dots, background stories more than not. the globe, spin the threads in a stroke, every story wears a robe, truth and lies in their code, journalists dig real deep, secrets out, they don't sleep, every angle they will keep, in the news we take a leap, new perspectives day by day.